everybody, I'm Dr. Konstantinos Travlos, the old host of Salvation and Catastrophe. Uh, and this uh, video is not a continuation of the series. I will not restart the series. So Nihat Kerem A uh, and uh, King Topachoglu can continue being happy that the website, the account and everything was closed down uh, because of the threats made by people, uh, various people. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk a bit about the Turkish sources or the sources I used on the Turkish side uh, for the story, so to give you a small idea about the literature and everything. So it's not the return to the chronological narrative series. I am not starting in that. The threats were very clear and I'm not putting in danger my friends. But uh, I will want to help people understand what kind of books are available out there. So. Let's start with the Turkey side, okay? Um, if you want a comprehensive uh, one-book treatment of the Turkish War of Liberation uh, uh, from the traditional viewpoint uh, that was formed during the long period of the one-party early Republican uh, period, then I suggest, of course, Fakhri Belen, Turk Kutrulu Savashi. Now, Fakhri Belen was a retired general. He participated in the Turkish War of Liberation. He fought mostly in the uh, Western Front, so in the Greek Turkish War, as we can call it. Uh, and I will call it that until in Turkey they start calling the Greek Revolution actually the Greek Revolution rather than the Morea in Siani. And uh, it's a great book to have. It's a very nice book. There is no new... Uh, here is uh, Fahri Belen as a, a, a 23rd Division Kurmay Bashkani, so essentially staff, uh, Chief of Staff of the 23rd Division uh, over here. Uh, and that's a great thing because he's somebody who participated in the events, but he has a very, um, so he understands some of the military events, but he, the book is also very good in covering the political events. The version I have is the one that was uh, published for the 50 years of the Turkish Republic, so in 1973. Uh, it's actually a very nice book, in my opinion. Uh, it's... Uh, approximately 600 pages, uh, heavily illustrated, there are pictures uh, of protagonists, uh, it includes excellent uh, general military maps, uh, so uh, it has actually quite a lot of them, so for example here is a Skisha here Muharebesi, the Greek uh, victory during the war, uh, during the attack, this is the Turkish counter-attack against the Greeks when they took a skisi here in the summer of 1921. Uh, so yeah, if you want a one book uh, treatment of the war from the Turkish point of view, but one that actually spends a lot of time on the international politics, the politics of the opponents and so on, this is your book. Um, now when we go to the references, it's not that it has a huge number of references, it has only about two pages, because it's generally a survey history okay it's not a heavily research uh, and it's uh, Greek references are a bit uh, poor uh, in the sense that it mostly relies on a bunch of uh, translated works that were translated in the 1930s and 1950s um, and reports that were saved in the Turkish military archives from Greek generals for example there's Frango's general reports uh, there is uh, Papula's report, Trikupi's report, um, one of the biggest Greek books in here that plays a role is Leonidas Dimitri Albay Yeni on Biliren in uh, That's not, by the way, the uh, actual name of the author. I think they mistake them. Um, uh, Christos Yarba Yunan Suvarishi. That's the. That's essentially the. Uh, I'll talk about the source later when I talk about the Greeks in another episode. But that's essentially uh, the guy who wrote a military history of the Greek cavalry during the war. Um, what else? Evangelos Lachanakardas Kuchuk Esia Felaketi, the destruction in Asia Minor, uh, and. Uh, 
Andrea, Prince Andrew, uh, Felaket the Root, The Road to Scatostrophe. So not a huge bibliography. The Turkish bibliography is bigger, uh, mostly based on some of the older works and, of course, the Tarik uh, Archivi of the, the Turkish general stuff. But this is a good uh, one-volume uh, coverage. Unfortunately, it has not been translated in English. This is a big problem with the Turkish historiography and literature on the war. Very little of it has been translated in English, and I'm actually surprised that at least this book did not get an English translation for the 100 years. Um, now, Belen is the third person to put out a survey history of the war. Uh, before him, uh, there is Jelal Erikans, Kuturlush Savashi Tarihi. Uh, Jalal Erikan also uh, knew about military and uh, war events. I have the Turkish Turkey Ish Bankasi edition. This is a recent edition, re-edition essentially. Um, and this is also a good book. Uh, Erikan takes a more popular war approach compared to Fakhri Belen, who takes more of a interstate conflict view. Uh, so Erikan talks a lot about like the idea of the uh, Mili Mujadele, the national uh, renaissance, uh, renaissance uh, the Kuvai Mili and so on. Uh, he doesn't really uh, have that more, much more than Belen. Uh, the maps are a bit poorer, for example, let me try to find a map. Uh, where is it? Let me see. Yeah. So we got over here, for example, uh, uh, 22nd of uh, 8 to 22nd of uh, July. The Battle of Gita here is Kisha here. Interestingly, he uses both the old and new calendar numbers, so that's good. Um, so here is like a, a version of the map. No illustrations, no pictures in, uh, in it, unlike uh, Fakhri Belen. Uh, the biggest problem I have with uh, this book is that it actually does not have a reference section. Uh, he does have uh, notes, footnotes, uh, and that is the reference section. And generally speaking, the Greek sources are few between. Uh, again, it's a book worth having, definitely. A different uh, perspective of the war than Fakhri Belen's more interstate character. Uh, but uh, if you're like trying to decide between Eric Khan and Belen, I would say Belen is better. The only problem is Belen doesn't have a nice new glossy edition. Eric Khan, uh, Jalal Eric Khan has. Again, uh, a retired military officer, so he knows about combat and about battles, and less about the politics of the other side than Fakhri Belen. Uh, now, if we go to the first book that came out, we have Jevdet Kerim in Jedai, Istiklal Harbi, Garb Jefesi. Garb Jefesi is the same thing as Bati Jefesi. Um, uh, it is the older Turkish version, uh, the Garb. And this was one of the first uh, books that came out uh, on the war. It was first uh, uh, published in 1925. Uh, this is the new edition by Yapi Kredi uh, Editions, a very beautiful edition. It actually comes together with a box with maps from the original. The maps, I don't have them right now, I gifted them to the Velisarios team. Uh, it is, and this was a gift from a friend, by the way, uh, as well. Uh, and again, uh, we have a retired officer uh, who participated in the war. Uh, Jevet Kerim in Jedi uh, did fight in the war. And uh, this is one of the first histories written about it. So in a way, it might be a bit dated in some of the information. Uh, uh, the book actually has some nice pictures of Eric Khan at the end uh, he, he, from his career. Here he is in 1921, okay? And, uh, but that's the only illustrations. Uh, for maps, the book doesn't have any maps in there. You have to buy together with the uh, map packet. Uh, the maps are very beautiful, by the way. They are they're worth having just for that. Um, the problem here is, maybe because it is such an early book, uh, it doesn't actually uh, have a reference section, okay? Uh, neither does it have uh, notes. So we actually don't know what references or notes he used. Obviously, 
uh, right in 1925 he used a lot of the official uh, uh, reports transcriptions and material produced by the general command during the war by the various officers he had the opportunity to discuss with the protagonists they were all alive back then and uh, not all of them had been uh, proscribed politically for later events um, his book definitely is a much more uh, uh, angry, if I can say it in quotation marks, book than either Eric Khan or Fakhri Belen. It presents the Greek invasion as a catastrophic, evil invasion in a way. Uh, it doesn't take so much the dry interstate uh, view that Belen does, nor necessarily the people's war elements within Eric Khan. Uh, uh, it's a good book. The interesting thing is, this book got translated in Greek. I didn't get published in Greek, but it got translated in Greek. And it was heavily used as a source for the Turkish side, uh, by the Greek side, uh, for the multi-volume history. Because the thing is, most of the multi-volume history in the Greek side was published first, uh, before the Turkish multi-volume history. Then, like, there was a period where one would publish then the other. So, for the Turkish side, this is actually like one of the main resources. And that, of course, creates problems in the sense that this was written in 1925. A lot of information that we now know was not known back then and so on. Um, again, a book worth having. Uh, so, you know, if you have these three books in Turkish, you have pretty much the main survey histories available to the public. Uh, Belens is the best, in my opinion. Uh, Eric Khan and uh, In Jedi are interesting as different perspectives. Uh, there is, of course, uh, Kazim Karabekir's uh, The Art Turkish War of Independence, uh, Istikal Harbiniz. Uh, that is also, I think, out by Yapikredi Yanirevi. And I don't have a copy of that, so I haven't been able to use it. It's a two volume book. Uh, it presents a different uh, version of the war to a point than the one presented in those works that follow very closely the official uh, Republican Party line and especially the contours created by who took the great speech by Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. Um, it is another book that it's interesting to have. Unfortunately, the new edition or maybe the original one has no maps, which is kind of problematic. Uh, let's go on to some other books of protagonists in that era. Uh, Izzedine Charlie Shar uh, was a general during the war. Uh, his grandson, a renowned architect uh, and also a researcher, has worked very hard to make his uh, books that were written with his memories of the war available to the general public. There are some very nice uh, editions. On Yilik Shavashin Gun Lugu, 10 Years of War Day by Day. Uh, uh, this I got as a present, actually, from uh, Izzedine Chalisar, the grandson as well. Uh, it's a book I really uh, value. I cannot fully read it because my Turkish is not very good. Um, this one is kind of like his day-by-day -day notes. Uh, if you are interested uh, in like the uh, repression of the Edhem uh, revolution or rebellion or mutiny, the Kekassian at him. If you're interested in uh, Second Inono, if you're interested in uh, Sakaria, and the great Turkish affairs in Sagaris, this is a good book to have. He was there, he was a protagonist. It's a pretty interesting book with a lot of information, but this book covers both World War I and then the war with uh, the other side, um, with the Greeks. Uh, so, uh, well, they're about... Half of it, less than half of it, is uh, relevant to the Turkish War of Independence, the Mili Mujadele. So this is all about World War One. this is Mili Mujadele. If you're looking specifically at the Mili Mujadele, then you have his Gun Gun, Saad Sar, Istikal Harbinde, Badi Chefesi. Day by day, hour by hour, the Western Front of the Turkish War of Independence, so essentially the Greek-Turkish War. Uh, and this is a beautiful edition, again, by Turkey Ishpan Kasi, uh, includes the book, okay, uh, oh, I had my notes here when I was going to prepare the work, okay, and it's a beautiful book, it's very nice, it's well illustrated, it's specifically his notes and stories about the War of Independence, 
Uh, it is extremely important for the repression of the at hand mutiny. It's extremely important, especially for second. I don't know because his division, the 61st division, was at the heart of the fighting in the Afghan area. Uh, and the book comes with a collection of maps. And just like in the case of the uh, Ichendai uh, double uh, book, the maps are beautiful. Okay, I mean, it is a very beautiful. Uh, a very beautiful, very well made um, edition. I heavily used it uh, for my war game scenarios for first and second in Onu. Uh, and there's a whole ton of maps over here. So uh, I really recommend this book. It's an excellent work. Uh, the author was a protagonist, he was there, and it has a lot of interesting information. Okay? Very beautiful book, worth every penny of it, every kurush. Uh, let's go on to more. Uh, let's go on to actually Mustafa Kemal Ataturk himself, uh, because he also uh, wrote about the war. Uh, so um, Nutuk, his great speech, which essentially clarifies a specific view of the events. Uh, and uh, characterize the contours within a lot of the historiography happened early on, is available in English in two uh, editions. One is by Turkey Ishban Gassi, and it's based on the translation of the German edition that was published uh, back in um, 1929. Okay. And the other one is a recent translation uh, published by, let me see, uh, Dante. Okay, I will not sugarcoat it. This book is terrible. The translation is terrible. Uh, and simply just avoid it. I'm very sorry for the people who put the effort into it. I don't understand what happened. It starts well and then it's just completely useful. So garbled. It's just not worth it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this book not worth it. Don't get it. This is the edition. You should buy if you want to read Nutuk in English. This is a beautiful book well uh, written, uh, well made, and it includes the maps uh, that were included in the initial uh, publication. And once more, very beautiful maps again, okay? And this is just a joy to read. I mean, I'm reading it right now. I'm two-thirds done. Uh, and it's a must read because it explains certain uh, perspectives uh, of uh, the Turkish War of Independence that are dominant in Turkey, uh, especially between among certain political factions. Uh, it is worth reading this together with Kazim Karabekir's book. Unfortunately, so as I said, Kazim Karabekir's book is not available. Uh, in English. Uh, parts of it are summarized uh, in uh, Hovhannisian's uh, four-volume history of the First Armenian Republic. He heavily uses Kazan. Hovhannisian actually can read Turkish, so he heavily uses Turkish sources when he's talking about the Turkish-Armenian War of 1920. Uh, so it's interesting to read the, both of them to see the differences. Uh, but if you can't do that, one solution is to make sure to read uh, Eric Zurker's uh, Eric Zurker's uh, chapter in his uh, The Young Turk Legacy in Nation Building. Uh, the politician is a historian, historians in politics, and then took speech of Mustafa Kemal Pasha. Young Turk Memoirs as a historical source, Kazim Karabekiz, Estiklal Harbiniz, the historiography of the con constitutional revolution, broad consensus, open disagreement, and a missed opportunity. So, uh, those three uh, articles published in this book by uh, I.B. Tayuris uh, do provide a good context for understanding the differences between Karaz Karabekir's and Mustafa Kemal's the Turks' uh, narrative of the war. Uh, this is not a military history. Let me be very clear. The war, the Greek-Turkish war actually takes very few pages in it. Uh, the Turkish-Armenian war takes one page. Uh, uh, so if you're looking for a military history, this is not it. It is not a survey history, it's a speech that presents certain events in a specific way. It is a must read in order to understand the Turkish War of Independence and development of the Turkish Republic and also Mustafa Kemal Ataturk's thinking, uh, but understand the limitations and the context of it. Now, 
Uh, if you want a survey history in English, your only uh, option until this day, now there is a book coming out of the military history, a survey of the military history by Edward Erickson, so look out for that. But until that comes out, your best option was essentially Andrew Mangas Ataturk, the biography of a statesman, okay? Now, uh, Lord Kinross also wrote a biography, but it's older. I found Mangos biography more interesting, it's more critical. Uh, it spent a lot of time explaining some of the things that, for example, in the Took could not be considered uh, fair to some of the other protagonists of the war, like uh, uh, Kazim Karabekir, uh, Refet Bele, or, uh, or Baif. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a good book, I like it. Of course, it takes a Turkish point of view, but if you want to understand the Turkish point of view in English and you don't uh, have one of the other books I presented, or if you cannot read Turkish, this, together with uh, this, provides an excellent uh, basis. And together with Ericsson's common book, you got a very good uh, take on the Turkish uh, point of view. Uh, good book. There's a Turkish translation, of course. This is the English version uh, by John Murray Publishing. Very nice book. Really like it. Uh, illustrations, pictures inside, maps. Uh, for the 100 years, uh, the General Kulmay Bashkanli in Ankara, the General Turkish Staff, the Military History Directorate, produced a very beautiful uh, album of the for the Turkish War of Independence. It's full of pictures, some of them that I haven't seen before. Uh, I used some of them in the previous episodes. Uh, this is an excellent book worth buying. Uh, so if you are in Turkey, you can try to find it. Maybe there are some copies in the military museum in Istanbul. That's where I got my copy. Uh, I really suggest it. Um, it's beautifully illustrated and it has a very nice uh, in the end, it has a very good collection of photographs of the commanders of major units of the Turkish army, of the Turkish Grand National Assembly army during the war. So definitely a book I suggest. Uh, I don't agree with all of its captions. It has a Turkish view of things and it has a very specific Turkish view of things. But it's worthwhile having, okay? It's, it's a beautiful book to have in the house. It's a very worthy addition for the anniversary. Uh, then, let's talk about a couple of other books. Uh, recently, uh, Selim Erdogan published his book on Sakarya. It's a book focused on the battle. Uh, what is really cool about this book is that it has a lot of excellent photographs and maps of the battle. Uh, it's a beautiful, lavish book. Uh, I am not completely happy with the number of Greek sources that he is using. I would have preferred to see a bit more. Uh, I mean, it has a rich, uh, it has a rich uh, 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 reference sections. One, two, three, four full pages. So it's good. It's referenced, but I just felt that there could be a bit more uh, stuff from the Greek sources. Uh, just like I don't know Turkish, uh, Selim Erdogan doesn't know Greek. He's working on it, I believe. So hopefully his next book will be able to take more advantage of the Greek sources. So it's a beautiful book. Uh, I like the maps. I like the pictures. Uh, if you're interested in the Battle of Sakaria, this is a must book to have. Uh, from Chronic Kitab, which publishes a lot of cool books. Uh, I got this book from J. Maletin Tashkiran, Mili Muchadele de Turk ve Yunan Esirler. Turkey Ish Bankasi edition. Uh, the book is a 2018 uh, publication. It's about the prisoners of war, of the Greek Turkish war. Uh, okay, In, the title is interesting. It doesn't say Turkish, the Kalhar it says during the, during the national renaissance. Uh, I think it's a great book for the Turkish side, but from what I noticed at the references, there are almost no Greek references or Greek works used. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of archival work, so I think uh, a future book uh, that uh, uses this as a basis maybe for the Turkish side and uses a lot of the Greek stuff on the Greek side could potentially complete the picture of the treatment of prisoners of war. Um, 
again, it's a nice book. It's got pictures, uh, lots of information. Uh, so, in one point, the same picture is repeated twice. That should have been perhaps avoided. But there you go. Uh, interesting enough. Uh, this one is a short book. Uh, it's again from uh, Ishpankasi Kulturiya uh, Editions. This is also Ishpankasi Kulturiya Editions. This is Osman Okiar, Mili Mucadele Donemi, Turk Soviet Lishki Rinde, Mustafa Kemal. So, Turkish Soviet uh, relationship during the period of the National Renaissance, so 1920 1921. Uh, there is a Greek book published about uh, the Turkish relations with the Soviets. Uh, and, but they weren't able to use this one as a resource. Uh, so this is actually a nice, uh, concise volume. It's not very long, it's about 185 pages, which can give you a, a survey of the relationships between the Soviets and the Turkish Grand National Assembly towards the first phase. Now, the other book I have over here uh, is not one that's going to be popular with a lot of uh, Turkish viewers, especially those with specific viewpoints. It is the Greek edition of Wanderdar's uh, uh, modern Turkey and in Sifrasi. Dundar is a demographer and he wrote a book on essentially the uh, population policies of the uh, Committee of Union and Progress. And I think uh, this is probably the best book written in Turkish on that matter. Uh, he doesn't use the G word, the genocide word, uh, but pretty much he, he does, in my opinion, present some of the most powerful indicators of uh, intent uh, to use population engineering to get rid of problematic populations within the Ottoman Empire. Uh, he does discuss a bit uh, also the period of the Turkish War of uh, Liberation. I think it's the best book to get an idea of uh, how many people lived of the various groups in Anatolia, in Asia Minor, in the Ottoman Empire in uh, 1918. Uh, and uh, the history, the background or context of massacres, uh, prosecutions and so on uh, that had happened during the Committee of Union and Progress years that uh, play a very important role in explaining Greek decision making the situation on the ground in Anatolia and why the war took such a form as a national war, as a, as a nation's war. Uh, there's a Turkish version, of course, you can suggest it, there's a Greek version. Uh, I consider it one of the most important books. Now, uh, another book that some people in Turkey won't like, uh, Eric Juncker's The Young Turk Legacy and Nation Building. This is essentially a collection of a number of uh, things that uh, he published over the years, articles, book chapters. Uh, some of it is more about the context of the war, covering the period, the 50 or 100 year period before the Turkish War of Liberation, the Greek-Turkish War. Uh, and a lot of it is actually very relevant uh, to the era and especially the Arab Republic. Uh, not everybody likes his work. Personally, I find it very interesting and it's very approachable for somebody who doesn't know Turkish. It provides an information and I don't think it's always very unfair. Uh, some people disagree. It's a good book to have as context for the other books. So, you know, if you don't know Turkish, which is a problem, okay, the books that you can get, in my opinion, to have a good perspective of the Turkish uh, a viewpoint in Turkish experience during the Turkish War of Independence are these three, plus Edward Eriksson's coming survey military history. Okay, uh, hopefully another Turkish historian uh, will also be working on a maybe bigger book than just a survey of the military history. But these three books, plus that fourth book by Eriksson, give you a good basis, and they're good books. I mean, they're fun to read. So I'll leave you there. Uh, good luck with everybody. Uh, my own book is coming out this uh, week, uh, Salvation and Catastrophe, uh, The Greek-Turkish War, 1919-1922. It's an edited volume. I'm going to talk a bit more about it uh, after I also cover the Greek books that I used as part of uh, the making of the series. Again, let me be very clear. I'm not restarting the chronological series. That's done. 
I got very angry with the threats that happened towards me, okay, just because of a Twitter spat with a couple of people who personally, I think, have some serious issues, okay? Uh, but I will make uh, one-off episodes discussing things like the historiography or specific events, depending on how I feel, okay? And I will make a long series of... Uh, 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 videos where I will be talking about the chapters and the contributors within this book, some of whom were threatened by certain people. That's all. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, wait for the next episode, which will be on the Greek historiography.